Hello everyone, my name is Ronak and you're watching Vector Art. In today's video, we will take a look at the breadcrumb bar in WinUI 3. This is another control under the navigation section and it provides the direct path of pages or folders to the current location. It is often used for situations where the user navigates or has a navigation trail in a file system or a menu system. It needs to be persistently available, visible and the user may need to go back to the previous location. So here on the WinUI 3 gallery, you can see we have the navigation sections and under the navigation sections, you see several controls. Uh, and in our last video, we took a look at this navigation view. And uh, today we will take a look at this breadcrumb bar. So uh, here is the breadcrumb bar. And before we start, I would request you all to please subscribe to my channel. It means a lot and it motivates me to create more such videos. Moving ahead here, uh, this breadcrumb bar, if you see, this is a simple breadcrumb bar, which uh, has this uh, trail of navigations, or this is basically used for folder navigations or a tree kind of navigation. So here on the home, documents design and it moves on and if you see the source control over here it is very simple uh, if you just create a breadcrumb bar and uh, add some elements to it you will see a breadcrumb bar like this um, and then you have a breadcrumb bar with a custom data template so you can also set data templates within the item template of the breadcrumb bar so um, so let's uh, fire up uh, visual studio and uh, see this control in action so i will launch visual studio now while the uh, visual studio is loading we'll talk about if this control is the right control for you a breadcrumb uh, lets a user keep track of their locations when navigating through an app or a folder and lets them quickly jump between to a previous location in the path you can use a breadcrumb bar uh, when the path taken to the current position is relevant. This UI is completely commonly used in folder managers and when a user may navigate many levels deep in your application. So here I have Visual Studio launched. I will create a new project. And let me select a blank app package from my recent WinUI templates. If you do not have these templates, uh, please check out my previous video. I will leave a link in the description where I have explained how to install WinUI 3 in your Visual Studio. I click on next, uh, rename this as bread crumb tutorial. And let's click on create. So if we talk about uh, talk more about this breadcrumb, uh, it displays each node in a horizontal line separated by these chevrons. If the app is resized uh, or if, it, if the width and height of the app changes, there is and if there is not enough space to show all the nodes, the breadcrumb collapses and an ellipse uh, replaces the leftmost nodes. Clicking these ellipses opens a flyout to show the collapsed nodes. So let's uh, see this uh, behavior in action. So uh, here my project has been loaded and now I have opened the main window.saml and I have some boilerplate code to remove. So let me go ahead and remove this button that I have. And within uh, my stack panel, let me add a breadcrumb bar and uh, let's set a name and uh, then close the uh, breadcrumb bar and um, this is a simple breadcrumb bar so and to set the content uh, of the breadcrumb bar uh, you do not have the content property here like we have in the text box or if you cannot um, to set the uh, content you will have to set the item source property of the breadcrumb so let's go to the code behind of this bread uh, of this uh, window and uh, let me get rid of this uh, code that was there for the button and within uh, after the initialize component let me create uh, the item source for that uh, breadcrumb bar 
so breadcrumb bar one dot item source equal to new string of then I will have to add some items here so let me quickly add them So uh, now our code is ready. So let me go ahead and run the application. And while it is building, let's uh, understand the anatomy of this uh, control. So here you can see uh, we have the ellipse um, that will appear when you resize or make the size of the window smaller. Uh, and if the breadcrumb bar is too long and it cannot fit within the width and height then it will display this ellipse and all the other controls uh, which could not fit will appear in this uh, rectangle uh, and then you have the chevron and the individual uh, uh, breadcrumbs and then you have the breadcrumb bar item and uh, then you have the current item which is the folder one in. So now um, to see the uh, behavior with the ellipse when the width of the uh, breadcrumb uh, cannot contain all the uh, items uh, within it then uh, all you have to do is um, if I go to my breadcrumb here and if I set a width of say 200 pixels and then you can immediately see here on the XAML live previewer uh, this is uh, also a nice way to design your application since uh, WinUI 3 does not have a designer. You can uh, you make use of this live previewer and make changes to your application dynamically. And this application should be uh, running when you make the changes, uh, else you won't be seeing uh, the live preview. For example, right now the application is open and uh, in the maximized state. And here you can see the live view. If I minimize the view disappears so it should not be minimized but it should be uh, open and then you make changes to your uh, designer and right now you see that we have this um, items which could not be contained um, in within that width are shown in this ellipse and the current folder which is the folder one uh, is displayed and if you see if you click on the ellipse you will see all the other items that are within this uh, breadcrumb so uh, next uh, a few recommendations on uh, how when and how to use this application so you can use a breadcrumb bar when you have many levels of navigation and expect users to be able to return to a previous level you do not use a breadcrumb bar if you only have two possible levels of navigation um, a simple back navigation is sufficient in that case and uh, if you show the current location as the last item in the breadcrumb bar however you have typically don't want to perform any navigation if the user clicks the current item if you want to let the users reload the current page or data consider providing a dedicated reload option so we saw how to create a breadcrumb bar and we also saw how we can use the item source let's uh, talk about uh, the item template next before we talk about the item template uh, we need to address the item source so the breadcrumb bar does not have an item property it only has the item source property this means that you cannot populate the breadcrumbs in xml or by adding them directly to an item collection in code uh, instead you create a collection and then connect the item source property to the code or by using data binding which we did uh, here you can see we have created this item source and bound it to an um, observable collection next um, I, some of the changes that I have done uh, is I have added this uh, existing code that I had uh, prepared uh, to demonstrate this item source and item template sections. So here uh, I have modified my item source a little bit different where instead of a string um, uh, array I have set it to an observable collection of type folder 
and uh, then set the value of set the property called name within this class so i've created a class called folder and i've created a property called name uh, of type string and here in our item source i'm setting the name property of this uh, class uh, and i'm setting the values to them uh, also uh, i uh, let's now talk about the item template uh, property so uh, by default the breadcrumb bar does not does the string representation of each item in the collection um, you can use the item template to display all the items in a specified uh, data template that you can you can create so here i have this item template over here and within our item template we have a data template and the data type of this data template is the class which is uh, um, defined by this uh, local so that it checks uh, the local folder uh, local file over here and um, it finds the first instance of this uh, folder so folder class and then we have the uh, breadcrumb bar item and uh, each bar item has to be fetched from this uh, class uh, property called name uh, which is in this uh, collection of item sources so here you have the content binding and uh, we have set the automation uh, properties dot name equal to binding dot name and uh, the content will be fetched from this name property and now we have the content template and within our content template we have a data template and then to display that name we need to bind it to a text block and here you can see we have done the same so when i run this application now it will fetch the items from the collection where uh, which we set it to our item source and here you can see we have our items and when i click on them you can see it navigates to that uh, uh, item so here uh, on my breadcrumb i have created the item clicked uh, event and on click of this event what i am doing is i am taking the items uh, and removing the items uh, until i reach the item that i have clicked so here you can see i have created an items variable uh, which is equal to breadcrumbs uh, item source uh, and then for each item of i um, i am traversing within the items till i reach the item that i have clicked uh, and that i get from the arguments and once i reach that item i till till i reach the items i keep uh, removing the items uh, before that so that is how um, i uh, achieve uh, the removal of items when clicked on a particular breadcrumb let's see it again in action so when i click on folder 2 I traverse back one item and when I click on folder one and then home. So uh, hope you all uh, liked watching this video. If you do, please give this video a thumbs up. Please do try this uh, control in your local environment and um, see how you can make use of this in your application. Till then, bye-bye.